This is a tutorial on how to make a mask for a flute player. I have taken some black cotton fabric. Um, the thinner the better. You don't want it to get too warm. It's going to be double thickness. So buy some nice thin um, inexpensive black cotton and it comes 44 inches on the bolt and that's what you're going to uh, purchase a yard. A yard will give you four masks, nine inches per mask. Um, I have already cut this piece here. Um, so I'm going to push that aside. Here's my piece of cut fabric. It's nine inches along the fold and then all the rough edges are over here. I'm going to fold it up and make another short and long triangle or rectangle. Um, this is where we're going to place our template to cut our shape. You're going to need to make a template at home. Use a piece of cardboard or something a little bit thicker and this looks a little strangely shaped but you need eight and a half inches this way and four and a half inches tall so you could cut a rectangle that way leave an inch and a half over here and then curve this up here along the top to make your curve it doesn't have to be exactly symmetrical it just needs to have the right length and the right height the rest of it doesn't matter so eight and a half by four and a half is what you're going to cut and I'm going to place this on the fold. So I wrote fold down here and fold over here. This bottom one is the, the single fold of eight layers. And the one back here is the double fold that has, um, you can see two pieces of fabric there on the fold. And you just want to get those folds along the fold edges. And if you have a rotary cov cutter, you're going to use that. If you don't, you can trace this with um, a silver Sharpie or some kind of chalk. Um, but I don't do that. I just cut it because like I said, it does not have to be exact. I'll go up this half an inch and a half and then I'll go along the curve towards the top and we'll get rid of all that. So there, this is the piece we need and when you open it up, it should be two giant footballs. So you should have your two layers of mask right there. So this is your starting point. Once you get your layers cut, you're going to go to the machine and sew them together. Now if you use um, a plain black cotton, it's not going to matter um, the right sides together or not because it looks the same on both sides and it won't matter for this. If you use something patterned, obviously you're going to want to right now put the right sides together. So I'm going to sew around the outside not completely around. Um, I can kind of see the center here by this fold line. I'm going to start a little bit past that. And then I'm going to go all the way around. of the other start point so that I can flip it inside out or actually right side out. So here's my starting point back here. I'm going to stop it off right here. Leaves me a hole right here so I can flip it. So now you have them right side together. You have them sewn together. You're going to go to your ironing board now. And the ironing part is important because you want to have it nice and flat. I'm going to turn it right side out. And I have my fancy tool here that I call a chopstick. And that's going to help me get all the edges straight and flat. Because you don't want any bumps around the corners and the edges. So this takes a minute to work out. It's a little bit um, fussy. But the chopstick, you can use a long pair of scissors, whatever you have that's long and skinny and won't obviously poke a hole in it. We're gonna go around the outside the best we can, then we're gonna iron it flat. All of our folds and seams are on the inside. I like to use a little steam. Makes it look nice and crisp. 
just do anything you can to get to the the seam on the edge and uh, no fabric folded in. Um, when the fabric's folded in, it all of a sudden gets super thick and hard to sew later. So I'm just guiding the fabric from the inside around. And our end. All right, there we go. We made it all the way around. It's nice and flat. We still have the hole at the bottom. We still have the opening at the bottom. You can uh, iron those, tuck those under and iron them a little bit if you want to. It'll be a little easier to sew later. And then another important step, you're gonna fold this in half and um, put a nice crisp, crisp seam down the middle. You're gonna need to know where that middle is later. And I find if I just sew it or iron it like this, it saves me time. I don't have to mark it or pin it. I just put a nice seam down the middle and you won't notice it later on, but there it is. I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark. All right, the next thing we need to do then is cut the hole for, sorry about that on the camera. It's hard to record yourself doing something with both hands. We're going to cut the hole for the flute. So we go back to our template and I have a purple line down here slanted. I'm gonna put this purple line on the mask, but I have to turn it over to match it. It goes on the bottom left um, quadrant. Line it up with the center line and the outside line. Um, now you want most of this cut to go above the halfway line up here. If it's too low and the flute goes in, it tends to pull the mask up closer to your eyes, makes it a little harder to see. So we're gonna start the cut here. Again, I'm gonna use my rotary cutter. Um, this is just to eyeball. I hope you're okay with eyeballing. A little below center and mostly above center. I'm making about a two inch cut. This is where the flute's gonna go in right here. Back to the sewing machine. I'm getting a tour of my sewing room. Which is uh, probably too fast to even notice. Okay, there's my machine. So I'm gonna put my machine now on zigzag and lower the stitch length to about two. Um, it's kind of like going around a buttonhole, but does, you don't have to do it that many times. I'm gonna separate the hole and just zigzag on each edge. And this will stop it from unraveling. So we're gonna go a couple of down the end and then spin it again and go down the other side. And spin it and then do a couple here and then finish it up where you started. Like I said, that's just um, to keep the hole from fraying and uh, losing losing strings that would be, you can't see it now I moved it, pretty annoying if you were playing and um, the strings were constantly coming off. I'm not going to clip these strings right now just to save some time. Um, the next step, which is the, actually the final step, is to put the elastic on. Now you need two pieces of elastic, seven inches long. Um, that's the size I start with. If that's too long, you can put a knot in it later. Uh, um, this thin elastic is my favorite. We're gonna use that. So when you're looking at the mask, you want the flute hole to be on your left, even though that's not where the flute hole goes, and you want the hole to be in the bottom because um, this mask is gonna go inside out uh, when we're done. So I'm holding the mask um, so I can see the flute hole on my left, the hole that's still open on the bottom. And I'm gonna start on the bottom right corner, kind of the end here, um, to go around. All I have to do to go around the bottom is to put four pleats before the, the fold and four pleats after the fold. So I'm gonna start here and get rid of my zigzag first. Here we go. We're gonna start a little bit. All right, now the pleats are gonna go away from the center. You can pin these if you want to. Um, I'm not a pinner, I'm just a doer, so I'm not gonna pin. So when you start, you're gonna pick up the fabric and put it towards the needle, and you're gonna line up your outside edge. So this edge over here, you're gonna want that to be nice and straight. 
and then sew through all those layers. I like to use a tweezers or something to help push it through because it's a little thick. As long as I don't hit my tweezers. Okay, so there's one. Now this I have to kind of eyeball this up. I would say my pleats are about three quarters of an inch and they don't touch each other. They're separated a little bit. You just want to get four pleats in before you hit that center. And as you're pleating too, you're also sewing in that hole that you left when you turned it inside out. There's two. And my third one is gonna be a little smaller. I can see I'm getting close to the middle. And then my fourth one here, I'm right at the middle. And this is just a guessing game for me. Kind of a challenge to try to get them even before I get to the center. Didn't do a super great job this time, but it'll still look great. Now after you get to the center, the pleats are gonna go towards the outside again. So you're gonna lift them up and shove the fabric under so that the pleat is on top. The extra fabric fold is towards you. And I'm lining it up straight. And here goes one and two. three and then your fourth one can include this corner and if it does you're right on for your measurements so I did a much better job the second time so I'm gonna tuck this under do one more pleat I'm gonna end up on the on the end I'm gonna sew this fourth one in all right so now I'm halfway done and I'm gonna just do a few stitches here to get up a little bit my elastic goes in next so I sewed across the entire bottom with no elastic now when I put the elastic on, the, it's going to go on the top, and this helps it hang from your ears better and stay below your chin. So my first pleat is going to go towards the needle, but I'm going to pick up the elastic and put it in the fold. So I'm putting the elastic inside the pleat I just lifted up, then I'm going to lay that down, and I'm going to stuff it under the foot. Lift up foot, there we go. Okay, so I'm sewing my elastic in right now and it's in the pleat. I'm gonna do that on the first pleat. My second pleat is not full of elastic, it's just a pleat. And then my third pleat is gonna be elastic. So I'll take the other end and I'll put it in the fold. Over it goes, flatten it out and go for it. And then my last pleat is no elastic. And I'm gonna leave some space before the center because my nose is gonna go in there and I don't want the pleats to be too close together at the top. At the bottom they can be actually touching, but not the top. So here's my fourth pleat. No elastic. The elastic is in now, but it's, it's on for one ear. We have to do the other ear, so we're gonna go past the halfway mark a little bit. And we're gonna start with our first pleat no elastic because we're at the top of the mask right now we're going to put the elastic in the second one so here's the first one the second pleat you lift and fold it over put the elastic in there so it goes closer to your ears than your nose scoot it down there let's see how much room i have left i better make this one a tiny bit smaller there that should do it Sorry if my hands are in the way, I'm trying to get them out of the way. Okay, there's number two. Number three, no elastic. And you can tell I'm already at that corner, but that's okay, because the last elastic, if I can get it down here, will be better. And then the fourth one is hopefully going to be somewhat close to your very first one you made. Elastic goes in, folds over the top, and we sew it, and we're done. So let's see if I can show you this now. And my machine did not cut. There we go. All right. There's my extension cord. Eh. Here is my mask. The top, the elastic is slightly on the above the halfway point because of the way we put it in. So the ears, this would go right on your face this way. And then you'll notice the hole for the flute is over here on the right side. So that's how we make a flute mask.